All right. Good evening, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? Let me know if you guys can hear me. Type a one in the chat box. If you can hear me, if you could see the share screen. Good evening, everybody. All right. All right. We're ready to get started. Uh, by the way, this uh, whole entire session will be recorded tonight and we will be sending out the recording later. Okay. Okay. Just a quick second. I'll be right back. Okay, I forgot to turn on the light. Okay. All right. So everybody's cool. All right. Cool stuff, guys. All right. Where's everybody from? Okay. I'm in beautiful Boca Raton, Florida. Can somebody tell me where you guys are from? Sydney, Australia. Good morning, Bill. All right. Tallahassee, California, Denver. Clearwater, Castle Rock. All right, Los Angeles. Okay, London, UK, Ohio. All right. Oh my goodness. Okay, awesome. All right, so. <laughs> All right. Okay. Awesome, guys. All right. So let's get started. I have a jam-packed presentation for you uh, tonight. Uh, feel free to ask questions um, in the questions pane. I will pay attention to that as well. Um, it's very important to be very active because remember, action takers are money makers, right? So uh, take action, be present, set your phones aside. All right. So let's get started. Uh, isn't everybody excited about earning season, right? Earning season starts tomorrow. Big financials uh, are going to start tomorrow. JP Morgan City will be reporting tomorrow. And once we get earnings going, we get more volume in the market. We get more volatility in the market because guess what? Volatility plus volume equal follow through. What do we get if we have volatility and low volume? Chop, right? Okay, so I'm very excited. We have crossed a rather difficult month of um, March, and we had a rocky start to the month of April. In fact, we had CPI numbers come in. We saw the big drop. If they would have went any lower, I would have had to put some paper towels, you know, to hold the bleeding, let, let, let to capture all the bleeding. But seriously, you know, the market went back up, did a 180 reversal, and now the market is back up. So now what? All right. So basically everything that we had to the left hand side within the last three to four weeks was just erased and we're back into the pattern. This is very good news uh, for the market in general. So let's get started, everybody. Tonight, we're going to be talking about exploiting earnings season for maximum gains, trading futures, uh, fast trades above average returns. So everybody that knows me, I do trade the power hour. So I do trade within the first uh, hour. I focus my strategies uh, to deploy them into the first hour to capture the biggest returns. Uh, before we continue, please take a second to review the risk uh, disclaimer. Basically, what we're saying here is that all, all the information provided by us, by Trade Out Loud, and of course, by myself, is for educational purpose only. It should not be construed as investment advice uh, regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. I'm pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a really high level of risk and may not be suitable suited uh, for all suitable for all investors because you could lose money. And before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, and your risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skill and time commitment, and of course, effort. All right, so let's get started, everybody. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education that is focused on 
educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest in the futures market and into the stock market. I have been doing this successfully for over 20 years. So what this means is that I quit my job 20 years ago and I trade from home. Uh, I come with uh, 10 plus years in investment banking and I run two services, one of which is very, very popular for those of you guys that would like to generate extra income. It's an income generating style service and it, it is specialized in trading the power power hour and this is the futures uh, trading room. And also the oldest program, which is the Stock Swing Trader, which was in, uh, actually we started Trade Out Loud with this service. And that was, that is back in 2010, believe it or not. And that is focusing on swing trading stocks and ETFs. We do also offer education for futures, uh, for stocks, for investing. And in fact, we're going to come up with a brand new course uh, designed to accelerate your investing. Um, we specialize in velocity moves. So what that means is that I'm looking for confluence areas where uh, potentially the price may have a uh, really dynamic response. It means that it's gonna have follow through. So you don't waste your time, you don't waste your money. And I'm looking at these confluence areas in relation with specific times into the market and specific price levels. All right, so for those of you guys that wanna learn more about Trade Out Loud and about myself and about my programs, you can definitely reach out on our website. Uh, you would also email us at info at tradeoutloud.com if you should have any questions whatsoever. And uh, you can find us on social media. All right, so let's get started. What are we gonna talk about today? So this is the agenda, so it's, it's a pretty rich agenda. And in fact, it's focusing on earnings season. It's going to be focused on earnings season. And if even if you're a stock trader, this is going to come super handy because uh, you're going to be able to, um, let's say, trade, if you will. And for those of you especially that are from the options field, you could take advantage of the same system uh, to trade the SPX, to trade the SPIs, to trade the Qs, and of course, the major indices. It's focused on that. We're going to talk about what we can expect in earnings season. We're going to talk a little bit about gaps, what a gap is, and how that is going to impact price, and how that price can impact uh, the rest, and obviously the indices, the major indices in the market. We're going to talk about futures and, you know, about futures trading in general, and how to create a game plan. And this is a quick typo right here for Q2. So this is for the second quarter of the year. But don't forget that basically the uh, earnings reports are coming out from the first quarter. So this is the first quarter reporting. And uh, we're also going to talk about one of the most important things in trading and how to prepare in advance for these moves that will be occurring in the market. They are occurring every single time. So we're going to talk specifically about entries. We're going to talk about stops, about setting targets, and uh, how we can um, calculate projected uh, targets using technical analysis. We're also going to be talking about the difference between stock trading and futures trading. And of course, the best time to execute trades within earnings season. All right. So as you guys know, earnings season has just officially started today uh, very, very quietly, but it's going to come in full force going into tomorrow with the big banks that will literally be opening the doors to big power players. So what does this mean for us as traders? First of all, it means more moves into the market. You probably have seen the chart of the Qs or a chart of the spies. And uh, if we have enough time tonight, we will review uh, some charts of the Q some charts, Qs or NASDAQ or spies or the MNE SP to see that on the daily, we're pretty much range bound. We haven't violated any kind of support or any kind of uh, uptrend. So we're still into a very dynamic uptrend. And in fact, we're defending that uptrend really, really well. Earnings season comes with velocity moves because earnings have the power to move the market from the fundamental side, not from the news side. 
because a news driven market is a thinner market. It reacts off of the news and it can pull back in an instant uh, to where it started. But with earnings season, once you have a company that has really great earnings uh, that uh, has reported, the stock will probably continue higher into the next resistance area. And we have also seen um, opportun you know, opportunities in markets where, for example, you had, let's say last year, I think it happened that FedEx reported earnings and the earnings were pretty bad. The stock went down, but it gapped down right into a support level. And a few days later, it started to fill the gap and go back up. So basically, the return on volatility is going to be a really big thing. Uh, also, this means like bigger price swings. So in non-earning season, you're used to creating price swings that are smaller. So you're going to specialize your strategy on small moves, so not on really big moves. So you're going to uh, look for scalps. You're going to look for momentum trades. Now, when earnings season starts, you're going to look for follow through. So you're going to have the confidence based on the market environment. So if the market shows strength, for example, you're going to have the confidence to stay in these potential trades for further follow through. So that means that trend continuation, uh, trend trading, that is a little bit different than um, scalping, right? And that, that that is where the big profits are. Also, another thing that is characteristic for the beginning of earnings season is that the first six weeks of earnings season are the most powerful. You're going to see uh, literally the uh, biggest move occur within these six weeks and follow through. And after these six weeks, price action is gonna start moving uh, down. We're gonna start entering the month of June. So basically what I'm saying is that the uh, half of April plus March is going to be very dynamic. But once we, uh, I'm sorry, May, but once we hit towards the end of May, very close to Memorial Day, things are going to slow down and they're not going to pick up. Because in June, sorry, I just feel like sneezing, <laughs> okay? So in June, it, it must be the light. Uh, so in June, what happens is that you're going to be, the market is going to be affected by a few phenomena. The first one is going to be the contract role in futures. Now you're going to have the same contract that is going to be split. It's going to be split into the current contract and into the foral contract. And that's going to be in the second week of June. Then you're going, to, we're going to have FYMC meeting projections. So the market is going to be very turbulent. Remember the volume is going to get lower again. So there's going to be some crazy price action. Following that, we're going to get the quadruple witching option expiration, which is going to be very hard to trade. Remember, as always, you're going to expect a big roller coaster with a big move up, a sideways uh, trend, and then a big splash to the downside. And not in that particular order. You could have the base first, you could have uh, the crash, and then you can have the pop up. So every single time, you know, we're getting a surprise. And then towards the end, we may get some, um, you know, a, a glimpse, let's say, of a hope uh, in terms of follow through because uh, we are nearing the end of the quarter, the end of the month. So we can expect some window dressing phenomenon, meaning institutions are going to dump their losers within this quarter that we have just started. And then they're going to pick up high flying stocks. And then those, depending on what those high flying stocks are, whether it's going to be Amazon or Google or Microsoft. So depending on um, if they're going to be part of NASDAQ, then NASDAQ is going to move. If we are going to see participation, for example, into 3M or Johnson & Johnson or uh, let's say even Apple, which is part of the Dow, then the Dow is going to have a bigger follow through than the rest of uh, the stocks out there. So there's so much to talk about earnings season and the specifics about earnings season. And the reason why I'm telling you all this, because I do come from stock trading background. So I have traded for more than 25 years stocks. And for the last 10 years, I have been focusing on futures uh, day trading. 
little bit easier than stock trading and it's not as uh intense as uh, as trading stocks but sometimes i do miss tra day trading stocks to be very honest all right so for the astute trader what this translates into more money i mean who doesn't like money type a one in the chat box if you guys love money okay or raise your hand okay who doesn't like money <laughs> all right we need to love money. Why is it important to love money in trading? I love you guys. Okay, why is it important to love money in trading? Because let me tell you something. There are people and there are traders that don't love money and don't value money, don't appreciate money. Uh, those are the traders that get into, get into a trade and, you know, don't really have high expectations of the return. They just go, you know, at it. OK, I'm, ju I'm just going to get in. I'm just going to test the waters. I'm just going to see if it works. It works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Those individuals don't really love money, but you really need to love money. When you love money, you have an allocated risk amount. You're protecting your portfolio. You're careful. Um, in You're careful about the market context. And if the market is in a pullback phase, you're going to raise your stops. Let's say if you're in a swing long or so on and so forth. So you're protecting your money, right? You're caring about your money. And this is the attitude that we need to have as traders. And just FYI, just because we are day traders, and some of you guys I know already, uh, so just because we are day traders, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to put a trade every single day. No, we have to wait for the right opportunity. All right. So what this also translates into is less time spent into the market. So you probably have noticed how intense the market was within the last three to four weeks. And it has not been easy. And usually in the morning where we have the power hour moves, the market has been choppy and has been horrible. But guess what? We have noticed lately that the moves are happening in the afternoon. Have you guys noticed today's price action? So choppy. So it was like not going anywhere. It was stuck into resistance. It was stuck actually between support and resistance, all the indices. Whether you're talking about the Dow, the S&P, whether you're talking about NASDAQ or Russell, they were caught into support and resistance. More so Russell was a little bit more turbulent because it was trading into minor resistance. So that was a little bit more heftier than the rest uh, of the indices, which were trading into simple resistance. So I love spending less time into the market because I don't like to sit in front of the computer all day. And I love to take advantage of the institutional power moves that are happening. But this morning, there was literally nothing out there. They started the algos really late in the day. All right, so let's go back and let's talk about earnings season and what this exactly means. So earnings season is basically the period of time during which a large number of publicly traded companies release their quarterly reports. Now, as you know, there are four earnings seasons throughout every year. The first one ends March 30th, so it goes from January to March 30th, and that is the first quarter. The second quarter starts in April and ends in June. The third quarter starts in uh, September uh, starts in uh, starts in July. Actually, earnings season starts about July 10th and then ends in September. And the last one starts in October and it ends into December. Now, there's a quick tip for you guys. Never push the pedal to the metal within these last months. That is March, June, September, and December. Don't push the pedal to the metal. These are the most difficult months to trade. They carry the contract role. You're going to experience less volume, high volatility, and a bunch of events that are happening, especially, you know, FOMC meetings and also tons of tons of data like CPI numbers, PPI numbers that are really producing high gyrations into the market. Now, quarterly earnings reports is uh only is one of the few times through the year when the company is required to report on its progress. So analysts, investors, and media always for these reports to come out and see what the deal is. 
right? And based on what they release, the institutions, the investors, the traders, swing traders, uh, day traders are going to take action. So it's all about expectation. So small companies uh, can see actually a 20% move in either direction. That's crazy, right? When they report their quarterly earnings. And at times, a small company will have a blowout quarter and the stocks will plateau or go down because the market expectations are too high. So pay close attention to what day each company reports earnings, especially if it's a power player within a certain index. Some companies with poor results will uh, do a late Friday filing and announcements uh, to try to keep the results out of the news. OK, so that's actually pretty good. But some company in majority of companies report either before the market opens or after the market closes. I love it when they release their earnings, even if it's at the market close, because you could get some really tight entries in some trades. So I'm going to show you some charts a little bit uh, as we go into this presentation. So company earnings are released before the market open and after the market closed, often causing substantial price movement in the underlying stock outside of regular trading hours. So you're going to see like chop, chop. Now, here's the advantage. The futures markets, they reopen at 6 p.m., right? So you have these companies that report from 4 p.m. to about 6 p.m. And the future, the, obviously, the stock market is closed, right? The stock market is going to open the next day. However, the futures market is open and there are traders. And don't forget that all these companies like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, et cetera, they have offices in Asia. They have offices in Europe. So what do you think they're going to be doing? They're going to take advantage before the New York, se uh, New York trading session kicks in. So oftentimes you're going to see an explosive move for example, in the index in which the company, let's say, or a group of companies reported earnings. So let's say we had Microsoft, we had Apple, and we had Google the same day. And let's say they're reported after the close. What do you think is going to happen to the market, right? The mar if they, of the report, let's say the reports are positive, right? And they have good earnings, they beat earnings. What do you think is going to happen to NASDAQ, right? Because they're part of NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is going to start lagging in, lagging in, lagging in. Then these institutions are going to build their really big power positions. Their offices that are in Asia, they're going to buy. The offices that are going that are in Europe, they're going to buy. And guess what? This is how the gaps are occurring. So at the open, you're going to see that the queues are going to gap up. But if you're a futures trader, you can take advantage of these moves. I like, and I'm going to share this with you and write it down. I love to look at charts, especially at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. is the perfect time to take a look at charts. So if you don't have time to trade throughout the day, watch the charts and watch the futures markets at 9 p.m. You only have to do it for about five minutes, maybe less. OK, I actually have one window with all four indices and all I have to do is glance at it. And it takes me like, I don't know, probably 30 seconds to identify a trade or not. And these are the type of trades that you can even identify outside of earnings season. But they're very powerful within very powerful within earnings season, because if you had earnings the night before and if those earnings were positive, you could write it overnight. OK, so you could do the uh, those AON trades, all or nothing trades. I like to take them with half the size because they're unsupervised. I go to bed. I don't even place any alerts. So I decide my entry. I put my limit order for my entry. I decide where my stop is. And then I decide my target. I place my target and I go to bed. In the morning, I either wake up in profits or I wake up with a losing trade. But guess what? It's only half an R. It's not a big deal. OK. So the largest reactions typically occur when the company substantially exceeds or misses expectations because we're day traders, right? Even as swing traders, and we don't care whether the market is going up or down, right? Do we care, guys? 
right? Do we care if the market is going up or down? I don't. I don't care. I could go long or I could go short. So you can make money as the market is going higher. And we could, we could actually make sometimes even more money if the market is even moving lower, right? Because of the panic, because of the fear. That is the stage four into the market, the distribution into the market. And you know the, uh, the saying, right? It staircase up, elevator down, right? So it's always the case because fear, right? Fear forces the price and forces the sellers to bail out, okay? So having access to extended hours in trading will allow future traders to react very quickly on this news and participate in the initial reaction to positive or negative news for the underlying stock. So for example, and by the way, guys, you could do this with the Qs with this and with the spies. Okay. And you could do it with the SPX. You could do it at the open. You could do options in it. It's so amazing. This is like literally like the best time to trade these six weeks. If I, and I often tell, you know, all my students, if, if I was not you know, to, to trade every single day because I do have a trading room, I would just trade these six weeks and done every single quarter and the rest I would take off. And, you know, I have had years where I literally took off, right? Okay. So for example, if you capture big moves, for example, in NASDAQ, uh, earnings reports, and if uh, that is if you get really uh, great reports, uh, or even bad reports in Amazon, Google, uh, Netflix, Apple, Meta, Boeing, etc. Okay, so basically you're creating a framework, right? So for example, I'm asking you guys. So let's say we have JP Morgan, right? We have JP Morgan and Citi that is going to report tomorrow. We could actually take a look at those stocks and uh, we could actually kind of you know, have a game plan to start predicting as, as where the price may go. So which index do you guys think that is going to be the most affected based on the earnings results tomorrow morning? Type it in the chat box. Type it in the chat box. Index, index, futures index. I know XLF. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. Uh, spice two, spice two. The Dow, the Dow, ladies and gentlemen, because within the Dow we have the, and that's what you're gonna watch, okay? The Dow, because J.P. Morgan and City are components of the Dow. They're not components of Nasdaq. They're not, they are components of SPX, right? They're, uh, they are S&P components, but uh, the Dow only has 30 stocks. So that, that impact having two or three companies that are reporting tomorrow and that are into the Dow, the Dow is going to react the most, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to pre-plan for the Dow, right? For the Dow futures. So you're going to plan it out, see where resistance is, see where support is, and say, hey, it's going to be bullish above or bearish below. If they blow out earnings, guess what? It's going to be bearish below. If they're going to have positive earnings, guess what? It's going to skyrocket. And by the way, have you guys noticed the strength in the financial sector? The financial sector has been running like the Energizer Bunny since last October, that's crazy, right? Okay, so tomorrow, guys, you can see it right here. Uh, we have JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and City that are reporting tomorrow, BlackRock as well. And we have Progressive and State Street. That's really pretty good list for tomorrow. All right, this is basically the earnings, um, let's say graph. Okay, so what this shows us is that uh, next week we're gonna be here. 5%, 5% of the companies are going to report next week. The following week, we're going to have seven. The a week after, we're going to have 15% and take a look at this. This is basically week three. Okay, we're just getting started. We're just getting warmed up, right? Okay, week three, 39% of the market is going to report earnings. This is crazy, right? 39% is going to 
is going to report earnings. And then we have the crescendo, right? Right, this is the, I'm sorry, the, the crescendo and this is the boom, right? 22, four, four, three, done, right? You can see no companies are reporting here, okay? All right, so let's talk a little bit more about earnings and about gaps. When I was uh, day trading uh, day trading stocks, I used to love trading gaps. And this was one of the things that I would love to focus on because let's face it, I like to focus on something that is fast, quick, instant gratification, all right? So I would focus on stocks that would gap up or gap down. So basically I was trading earnings. So what is a gap? A gap is a price change between the close and the open. So when the company closes, right? You're gonna see the red bar, the red bar, the open is at the top and the close is always at the bottom. So this is the close right here. And the bullish bar, the open is at the low of the bar, not the very low of the bar, but it towards the low of the bar. This is the absolute low. This is the uh, open. And this is the close. This is the high. So this is the high. This is the low. This is the open. And this is the close. So the difference between the close and the open represents the gap area. All right. So don't confuse it uh, with the low of the bar, right? So it specifically says the low and the open, right? The close, uh, the I'm sorry, the close from the prior session and the open from the next session. And it could be the other way around. For example, it could actually uh, close here and then it can open over here. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about why futures. Why, why do you guys think that I have shifted 180 degrees to trading futures? Well, first of all, I don't have to scan through a gazillion stocks, right? Uh, I still swing trade very actively, but I just scan on a daily basis or I scan every other two weeks or every other two days or five days or so. Uh, I do a really big scanning through the weekend, but basically... Swing trading is less involvement into the market. So for swing trading, it literally takes me about 10 minutes every single day. That's what it is. I look at the positions that I have and I adjust. If I have to, I just adjust some stops. I raise some uh, stops, if I will, or lower some stops, depending on whether I'm long or short. So that's minimal involvement. I also place tons of gazillions of alerts when I scan. So I don't have to scan every single day. Can you scan every single day? Yeah, you can. And actually, I do a little bit of scanning every single day because I like to see what's moving, right? So for example, today in the trading room, there was this company that kept on popping on my scanner, R-E-N-T, Rent. And oh my gosh, it was like popping, popping, popping. And it's like, when I looked at it, I don't like I said, I don't day trade, but it had a tremendous day trading opportunity at around 10.30 or so. And it was up like 200%. It was like 180% when I last saw it. I don't know by the end of the day what it did, but it, it had a tremendous uh, opportunity. And I typically look of what's moving within the market because I want to know if there is any sector rotations. I want to take advantage first because I'm trading the indices. So if there's money that is exiting financials and entering into technology or entering into uh, semiconductors, I'm the first one to see it because I'm a day trader. And that's the reason why I watch the markets. So let's talk a little bit about uh, maximizing capital efficiency, right? So the leverage available for futures allows you to utilize your capital a lot more efficiently. So for example, if you had a $200,000 account, right, you can speculate. Uh, and if you want to speculate on the direction of the S&P 500, uh, for the purpose of this example right here, you have three options. Option number one, cash, right? So you buy $200,000 $200, worth of spies, right? Uh, number option number uh, uh, I'm sorry of, of of the spies yeah option number two you have you have leverage available depending on if you're a stop if you're a swing trader you have two to one if you're a day trader you have four to one if you're a prop trader you can have ten to one or six to one or twenty to one depending on the uh, the company but you buy half 
of what you would uh, uh, invest if you were in, if you were all cash, right? Because in cash, you buy it with two hundred thousand. When you are you, when you have leverage, for example, on a two to one, then you buy hundred thousand dollars worth of it. So bam, already in half. So you have another hundred thousand dollars laying around available for you to uh, trade something else. And then you have futures where you have uh, where you can take advantage of the ten to one leverage that is available for the S&P contract. And this allows you to control the same size portfolio, but using only $20,000 of your capital, because it's 10 to one. So this is pretty crazy, right? Uh, so why futures? Why did I shift into futures? Well, first of all, it was many years ago. It was like 10 years ago. So I guess my account got really bored of seeing all my day trades, right? And back then I had to print all the sheets uh, like 15 years ago, right? And I would go with like folders like this because being a day trader, I was trading a lot and I wasn't just trading the power hour. I was literally trading all day long, which is not good. But this is what I was doing because I was very committed. I needed to make money. And I needed to learn super, super, super fast. So you obviously know you learn by doing it, right? Okay, so bottom line, she said that I was paying a, a, you know, an awful lot of taxes. And she said that she has a client that is actually you know, trading futures and there are huge advantages. I don't need to prep, but at the end of the year, all those folders and basically you, know, you get a 1099B form from your broker and that's all you file. And I'm like, you know, okay, I'm not really sold on this. And she said, try it. So here's the thing. Uh, what do you guys do every single morning, even if you're a stock trader or an options trader? What is the first thing that we do instinctively in the market? Do we start scanning right away? Do we start scanning right away? No. What do we do? We look at the cues. We look at the spies. We look at the diamonds. We look at Russell. Do we look under the hood to see the market performance and to see if there are going to be if there are going to be any gap ups, gap downs, if the price is flat, if there are going to be any continuation plays to the upside or to the downside. So we're looking for the environment and we're trying to see what kind of environment we have for the day. Right. So this is what we do. So basically, every single morning, we're looking for opportunities. And we're looking for um, uh, we're looking for uh, to kind of like detect what kind of environment we're going to be having, right? So guess what? I gave it a try, and instead of you know, and I did this for a couple of weeks. Instead of trading and scanning like for Apple and Google, and I remember back then it was RAM and all those stocks, Broadcom, etc. So I started trading just the cues and the spice just to get, you know, my feet wet a little bit. I wasn't a big fan of, and even back then, of just trading the cues and the spice, right? Okay, on a day-to-day -day basis. Because you could get a lot more action in stocks than you uh, get into the indices. Uh, so after a couple of weeks of trying this, I went like, yeah, okay, you know what? Now I'm going to try the futures indices. And then, you know, of course, you got to get approved for futures trading. So, you know, in the meantime, that was that's the reason why I was, uh, you know, testing the waters with the cues and uh, the spies. Once I was approved for futures trading, I got into futures trading and I was started trading. And back then we didn't have any micros available, but we didn't really have the volatility that we have right now. So what I did is I opened an account with literally $15,000 and I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a go to see how it trades. And because of the volatility, you could actually make a lot of money with very uh, with a very small account back then. So I started, you know, I, I started trading and I'm like, I was shocked and I was in shock of how much money you can make. Uh, literally without, you know, doing all the prep work that you need to do for trading stocks. And here I am today. I wouldn't change anything for the world. I wish I would have started earlier with futures trading, but it was, you know, the way the way it was. So basically in uh, futures trading, you have really re reliable volume. You have about 2 million contracts traded on a day-to-day -day basis in the S&P. Now you're going to say, 
Have we had it now because you said that we're going to get a little volume? No, we haven't. We had like probably 800,000 or by the end of the day, maybe we had like one or 1 1.2 million. Uh, but with earnings season, things are going to change and we are going to get there. Uh, then uh, the advantage is that you're trading major markets. Guys, you're going to be able to trade NASDAQ. You're going to be able to trade the S&P. You're going to be able to trade Russell, right? And remember, they move 10 times faster than the uh, ETF itself. You could trade futures for income, and you could also trade futures for wealth. And you could also hedge against your portfolio, your long-term portfolio. Uh, you have different tick values and price ranges for every single budget. Now I know, you know, and by the way, we are trading a very volatile futures market. When I started trading futures, it was like a walk in a park and we would get, uh, we would get risk levels, let's say in NASDAQ of three points or five points. And it would be like shocking if we had a 10, uh, 10 point stop in NASDAQ. Now you're getting a 50, 60 point stop in NASDAQ on a five minute setup, which is pretty wild, but this is the volatility that we're trading in. But luckily because the CME saw this volatility back in 2018 and they came out with micros. Now micros are 10th of the size of the full size contract, which is pretty cool because you can adjust much better to position size using those. One of the biggest things that, uh, you know, it's really cool about the futures market is that guys, you don't need a scanner. So there's no extra cost to use a scanner because you're basically using four charts that are right in front of you. That's it. You're trading NASDAQ, you're trading S&P, you're trading uh, the Dow, and you're trading Russell. And you're not trading those every single day because most of the time your focus is going to be on just one. And typically the power players are either NASDAQ or the S&P or, or the Dow. Russell, so and so, depends on how it sets up. You don't need to use sophisticated indicators. In fact, the only indicators that are used, I'm going to show you in just a moment, um, into charts are just a, a few moving averages and volume. And that's pretty much everything that I use on the charts. Uh, you get tons of tax advantages that I just mentioned at the end of the v at the end of the year. You get a 1099B form, and that is it. You don't have to report anything else. Uh, you there is no pump and dump into the market, so no talking head is going to come on CNBC and say something about Nasdaq, right? Nasdaq is comprised of the hundred stocks, and even if they say something about Nasdaq, those stocks are not going to pinch; they're not going to move. So it's really safe from rumors and no manipulations, no upgrades, no downgrades. Because remember, if you're in a trade, for example. Let's say you're in Apple and you have like so-and-so analysts that are coming from, I don't know, Goldman Sachs, and he's the uh, popping on CNBC or Bloomberg. He's saying, oh, we're downgrading Apple. Boom, down goes the stock, right? So anyways, and the one thing that I love the most is that it's a 24-hour market. So if I have time tonight to evaluate the market, I may put a trade on, right? Okay, so now... How much money do you need to open a futures account? Well, first of all, let me share this first with you. This is not a market for small accounts. A small account is considered an account that is under $30,000 because of the market volatility. Uh, and if, and I know that you can go to a broker and open an account for $500, but please guys do me a favor. Don't do that because you're going to lose that money, especially if you're not trained. And even if you're trained, there's no way Jose on the planet that you're going to make money off $500. So that is actually, you know, what they're doing is selling the dream. They want to take your money. They want to take your commissions. That's brokers for you, right? Okay. So here's the thing. You can open an account with a trusted broker for about $5,000. I love TD Ameritrade. I love Schwab, right? Schwab took over TD Ameritrade. They're really reliable. Their customer service is off the charts. Amazing. So I have been trading with them for a really long time. And I mean, really, really, really long time, like 20 years, more than 20 years. Okay. And the more you trade with them, the more you could negotiate your commissions. 
Okay, so that's good to know. The other thing, so that is a bill I was talking about, uh, TD Ameritrade. Now it's Schwab, so you can open an account with Schwab. I currently have my accounts with TD Ameritrade. They're going to get transferred on May 10th to Schwab because Schwab took uh, uh, took TD Ameritrade. So here's the thing. With $25,000, you can open a day trading account, right? But what is the dis disadvantage here? If you open an account with $25,000, you actually need to have more in your account. Because if you open it with $25,000 and you, you know, start day trading Apple and Google and what's whatever, uh, and if you lose a penny, so if you lose on that stock, guess what? Your day trading status out the door, bye-bye, and you cannot day trade anymore. But you can still... Uh, 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 for example, if you open up um, an account with $5,000, for example, with Schwab, guess what? Even if you, if you are below $5,000, as long as you have uh, the margin requirements to trade uh, the commodity or the futures indice or bonds or whatever you may be trading currency, uh, you can still trade it. Okay. So that's the difference between, uh, between those two. Let's take a quick look at some examples. Earlier, I was mentioning, you know, that I only use, you know, just a few moving averages. You are going to see that I have really clean charts throughout. So this is the 20, the blue, I use the 20 simple moving average. The pink is the 10 exponential moving average. And uh, the uh, green is the 50 simple moving average. Now, side by side, we have uh, Netflix. And right down here, we have, uh, we have NASDAQ, right? So Netflix is a component of NASDAQ 100. So what do you think is NASDAQ is going to do when Netflix reports earnings? It's going to be like all year. It's like, oh my gosh, what is, what is Netflix doing? Is it gapping up? Is it gapping down? Who cares? We don't care what the numbers are. And again, don't try to, you know, interpret the news because everybody goes like, oh, the CPI numbers were like this. That means that it's like this for the market and this and that. You don't need that. You don't need that as a day trader. You, you don't even need it as a swing trader. You don't need to know what the data is. You just need to wait for the reaction of price. That's it. Because the price is going to, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, index is going to show you the information that is going to be priced in. OK, so if the CPI numbers are OK for the market, then the market is going to go up. If the CPI numbers are not OK with the expected uh, with the expectation, then the price is going to go down. Right. And the same thing with earnings. Right. So in this case, earnings of uh, Netflix reported earnings and it report, reported earnings before the market opened. Right. So it reports before nine o'clock. Okay, it reports before nine o'clock. What do you think NASDAQ did? So once you have the sell action and the impact in Netflix, here goes NASDAQ. And by the way, this is a monster move down, let's say only from 250, only from 250 to 100, <laughs> right? So this is a bunch of money, guys, right? A bunch of money. That's about 150 points. OK, that is 150 points. Now, one point in NASDAQ is $20. If you have that with one contract, you guys do the math. Crazy. OK, now I was talking about the Dow earlier, right? And I was saying that JP Morgan City and City is going to report tomorrow. And they're going to be reporting before the market opens. And I was telling you guys that the one index that you need to watch is going to be Mr. Dowski, right? The Dow. This is what you're going to be watching because you have both components into the same index. So depending on how and what the reaction is going to be within those, uh, uh, those two uh, major stocks, you're going to see the same reaction into the doubt. Let's take a look here at IWM. IWM reported earnings and immediately shot up and then it pulled back. Why? They sometimes do the forced selling in the pullback and they do it around 945 
Okay, write that down. And then they buy back again around 10 o'clock. Bam, here it is. Here is the action in YN. It bounces, it mimics the action in IWM, and then it pulls back, load the boat, and higher. Isn't that cool, guys? This is like having your own crystal ball, right? This is crazy, Pam. All right, so there's one more thing. Economic indicators are the main driver of price action. In the pre-market trading, uh, trading session, a majority of uh, economic data is also released between 8.30 and also, also sometimes 9 o'clock, right? Uh, and that is literally an hour before the New York trading session uh, market opens, right? And also when you're getting both, imp both influences, when you're getting um, earnings, and you're getting news, okay? And if they're in sync, you could have like one of those big follow through days when you're gonna make 100 points in NASDAQ, you're gonna make 150 points in NASDAQ, you're gonna make, uh, I don't know, we made yesterday like 20 points in SMP in a crappy market. You're gonna make like 30 points to 50 points uh, in SMP. So here's the thing, I don't trade news, okay? I used to, I don't trade, I traded it, I traded news in my, first year of trading in my first year of trading and I swore that I'm never going to trade news again and it is um it is high risk uh you're literally betting on the direction so it's more of a gamble than really trading I trade the reaction to the news so I went I wait for the news to go out and then I wait for the reaction you don't have to interpret numbers you don't have to be an economist and you don't have to be a math whiz you don't have to be an analyst. Uh, you don't have to be a hedge fund in order to know what the numbers are. All you have to do is wait for the reaction. Waiting, okay? And I know waiting sometimes is really tough, right? Uh, how many of you guys think that, you know, patience is a real, patience is a really hard thing in trading? Type of one. Do, do you guys think that patience is tough? Patience is tough, but I can tell you about patience because yesterday we waited for that S&P trade of ours to achieve target. And by the way, it didn't really go much further than 26 or 27 yesterday and then it pulled back down. So we nailed, we nailed it. I know patience is really hard. I, I, I wish there was a way to teach patience, but I do teach patience by not, not taking trades in uh in my trading room. So anyway, we have Meta, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, also known as the FANG, right? So Meta used to be Facebook. That what that's why it was called the FANG stocks. And they have a great potential for your portfolio. And by the way, they're pretty expensive to trade, especially if you have a smaller account. So you could take advantage of Meta, Amazon, Netflix, or Google, or Broadcom. Broadcom usually makes a big splash into the market and earnings. And that is a very expensive stock. And you could trade it through NASDAQ futures. You could actually go, if you have a smaller account, you could actually trade it with micros. Okay. So NASDAQ 100 is a great way to access top tech uh, market opportunities right? Even those really high priced, there is a way to trade Tesla, right? So if you want to trade Tesla through futures, you could definitely do that. You also have the capital efficiency to trade, right? And that is, you know, that it, that can translate to definitely significant um, uh, savings. Uh, taking advantage of the 24, almost, almost 24, not quite 24, 24, um, our future is access. And remember this, if you're busy throughout the day, and if you came to see this webinar right now, there is hope for you. Start watching charts at 9 p.m. And I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you exactly what you need to watch for. Okay. Don't watch any chart. Just watch the one hour and the four hour charts. That's it. That's all you need to do. And look for breakouts, look for breakdowns, look for consolidations. Those are super powerful in the overnight trading session. So basically you can sink your fangs into NASDAQ 100. And not only that, but have you guys heard about the Magnificent Seven? Right last year, the Magnificent Seven were blasting higher. Guess what? You can sink your Magnificent Seven in your NASDAQ futures. This is the beauty about futures trading. Now, 
like I said earlier, you have to know a little bit about the stock market. Not much, not much, but know as much. There are 30, uh, 30 Dow stocks that literally are the components within the Dow, right? So the Dow is formed by these 30 stocks. And you can see some of the stocks right here, Microsoft, Honeywell, Coca-Cola, Cisco, Procter & Gamble, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, McDonald's, whatever, okay? So you can see the stocks. You can have this information available anywhere and any platform has that available for you. Now the S&P, the S&P has 500 stocks under it. So that is a bigger benchmark. And I think this usually illustrates the economy a little bit better than the Dow or NASDAQ. So the S&P stocks are very sensitive to financials because they're financial rich. You're going to find all the, uh, all the banking system in here. And then you're going to find the energy sector in here. So they're very, very sensitive to that. If oil goes down, if you have crude oil, if you have uh, natural gas, if you have um, Arbob gasoline going down, guess what? That's going to produce a little bit of stagnation and a little bit of, you know, um, even pullback into the mini SMP and also financials. If financials and the energies are going down, you're going to see the SMP going down and pretty much put a halt on the rest of the indices because this is the broader market, 500 stocks under it. And then you have NASDAQ and NASDAQ has 100 stocks under it. You're going to find your semiconductor stocks, your tech stocks, so the big power players like Adobe and Apple and Tesla and Microsoft and Google and Broadcom, et cetera. So you're going to have a whole a but a bunch of uh, of really powerful stocks under NASDAQ. And then you have Russell 2000 with the Russell stocks. Uh, Dusko, where can we find a list? You can, your broker has it. So if you have a, a you, if you have an account with any broker, go to the market minder and uh, try to look for uh, NASDAQ uh, 100 components, S&P components, Dow components. All right, so basically you can sink whatever you have into the, from these stocks into um, uh, into your index. I have four screens that I watch on, they're on my right hand side. You guys can't see me uh, right here. I have five screens right here. So basically I use three for day trading and I use uh, two monitors for my market, for my, I look, uh, I call it under the hood. So I have four huge windows uh, with about 30 stocks in each, each window. I don't look at trades like this, okay? So I don't look, I don't look through and I scroll through this. I have a windows for every power stock and I have them uh, organized depending on the, the, the weight of the stock. So um, basically, let's say, you know, I have, uh, let's say I have UNH, I have Goldman Sachs, whatever, within the Dow. If those stocks that are the heavyweight stocks within that index are lower, that is going to affect, uh, that is definitely, sorry about that, that is going to affect uh, the Dow, right? But if those stocks are higher, then you are going to see uh, the Dow higher. So nobody really talks about this. And uh, I have to tell you, when I first came out with uh, my futures program, I had a lot of friends uh, and remember that, you know, a lot of, you know, we started trade out loud with swing trading, with investing. Uh, and, um, you know, I was day trading just for fun. And I was day trading to create my income so I don't have to dab into my swing trading account. Uh, but definitely I was doing this on my own. And a lot of my members and a lot of my clients were asking me, it's like, okay, so uh, how do you do it, right? Because I was telling this, that, yeah, I took a little bit of NASDAQ long or I took a little bit of this and they were like so intrigued they were like please show us how to do it so it took me about like four years until I came out with the course because I wasn't prepared for it like literally I wasn't prepared to teach I was I'm just a trader and guess what uh it 
it became like one of the most popular courses ever uh, because it's income generating, right? So income is super, super important. All right. So what can you trade, uh, for example, and what you need to look for? Uh, this is a heat map. It's provided by finvis.com. And you can see here some of the largest companies on stock market that are, are about to release their earnings reports. And look at this. You have NVIDIA, you have Microsoft, you have Google, Amazon, Tesla, you have Procter & Gamble. So you can see all of these stocks right here that are just ready to report this quarter. So get ready, guys. For example, this is Google. You can see Google that is running higher. What do you think we traded when Google reported earnings? Do you think that we traded the Dow? Do you guys think that we traded the S&P? No, we traded NASDAQ because it's a power player in NASDAQ. So one of the things that you need to do is create your checklist. So I am big on creating checklists. I'm big on creating uh, all of these uh, elements uh, like uh, uh, trading plans and strategizing for the day ahead. So first of all, you need to know when these earnings are coming out. So you need to be focused on the earnings calendar. Uh, you could get that from anywhere on the internet, MarketWatch, Yahoo, uh, Yahoo Finance, um, everywhere, everywhere. The CNBC, you could get your um, uh, economic Benzinga, you could get your earnings everywhere. So check the earnings calendar and write down the stock, the power player stocks, right? So um, remember that the stocks are reporting before the market opens or after the market closes and write it down. For example, pay very close attention when Apple or Google or Amazon is reporting because those are going to be big days for us, right? So remember, I push the pedal to the metal at the beginning of earnings season. So my first six weeks are really dynamic and you're going to see them in my portfolio. There are days where we make like 100 points, 120 points in NASDAQ. And, and I'm talking about in the power hour, I'm not spending time all day in front of the market. At 11 o'clock, I'm done. I'm at the beach, actually. Uh, trace your levels and trade your plan. And for example, if you have NASDAQ stocks that are going to report, Na watch NASDAQ. If you have the Dow stocks that are reporting, watch the Dow. If you have financials or energy stocks that are reporting like CVX, et cetera, what are you going to do? You're going to be watching the S&P and you're going to watch Dow because, right, some of them are part of the Dow as well. So um, it, it makes it a little bit, so I want it to structure a little bit so you can see how you're going to be trading. So the best times to execute the trades, when are the best times to execute the trades? It's either before the market opens or after the market closes, obviously. And after the market closes, remember, watch for 9 p.m. because that is usually the best time to look at charts in the evening in the futures market. So how to prepare? Again, know those stocks and know when they report pre-plan their levels. Now, here is a quick example. Uh, by the way, this is Netflix right here. Netflix reported earnings after the market closed, right? After the market closed. So look at the basis that formed before it reports earnings. Sometimes you can have uh, run-ups in uh in stocks and sometimes you're going to get basis most of the time you're um what i've observed into the market is that ahead of earnings you're going to see probably a range bound price action because you know there are no whisper numbers. sometimes there are whisper numbers that are out and the stock is just running ahead of earnings or is just dropping ahead of earnings but most of the time i find that about 65 to 70 percent of the time they base so this is pretty easy to trade because it's bullish above the base and it's bearish below the base. If you're a stock trader, you can trade it. But if you're a futures trader, you could actually take advantage of it. So in here, for example, you could see that it's trading above the resistance. This would be your buy point. And this is when it reported our earnings. So take a look at this area right here. This represents the first. So this is an hourly chart. So the market closes at four, let's say five, six, seven, eight, nine. You would be just about here. So you're going to uh, look at and see if there is a buy setup, if the, whatever strategy you're applying. But in this case, I'm looking for a breakout. So I would put my order entry right here above the base. I would place my stop just below this 10 EMA, just below the support, and I will let it rip into, uh, into the open, okay? Uh, James is asking, what chart time intervals do you trade on? So James, if you want to trade the overnight, so for example, in this example right here, 
like I said before, watch the one hour and the two hour. If when I trade the open within the first uh, hour, when I trade the power hour, I have, I have strategies that I trade the two minute chart. I trade the one minute chart as well. And I trade the five minute chart. So these are the most aggressive, aggressive time frames. Uh, I have entries as soon as 932. So at 9.32, you could see you know, probably at 9.30 or 9.31, I'm going to be calling a trade for 9.32 or 9.35. So these are very aggressive. And this these usually happen in earnings season where we don't wait. We made our money. Well, typically in earnings season, I only trade for, I don't know, I'm probably done by 10 o'clock and we're done and we're done. Okay. So no use uh, sitting around. Here's another example with NASDAQ. You can see here at the base, right? You can see the breakdown here that it's caused again by Netflix. Netflix had really bad earnings. You can see the base right here had really bad earnings. You could take advantage of this, okay? So this is something that not a lot of traders, um, you know, pay attention to. And definitely I haven't seen anybody, unless they're copying me, of course, uh, teach. Uh, so this is the specific for me and uh, for Trade Out Loud. If you hear it elsewhere, they copied us, just like they copy with uh, synchronicity and divergency. This is a concept that we came uh, for the futures market. And it's totally different than the synchronicity and divergency that you're finding in the stock market. All right. So here is another uh, example of a power move. Uh, in this day, we had Google. We had Microsoft. Uh, we had Amazon right here. And of course, because we have all these uh, power players uh, in here, guess which uh, index we're going to be trading. Of course, you guess it's NASDAQ. So uh, Google up. We have Amazon up. We have Microsoft up. Where do you think Google, what do you think, where do you think NASDAQ is going to go? Down? Are we going to short it? No, of course it's going to go up. Take a look above the 200 SMA early entry because this happened at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, you guys can see it. Bam right? The gray highlighter area represents the overnight trading session and the white area represents the newer trading session. All right, let's see some more examples here. All right, so for example, here we have uh, we have uh, the Dow and we have Walmart, Walmart being a component of the Dow. We have NASDAQ and of course here we have Apple, Apple reporter earnings and down it went. Guess what? Oops, sorry about that. And guess what? Uh, NASDAQ followed the stock. Here we had Walmart ripping to the upside and we had YM, uh, I'm sorry, here we had YM ripping to the upside, right? So ripping to the upside, following, so the index is going to follow the dominant stock, the dominant earning stock. This is pretty cool, guys. This crazy pants, awesome. Like I'm telling you, like this is instant gratification, right? All right. So, how to predetermine the entry, the stop, and the target? This is the EST based on technical analysis. So, what you need to look for, okay? Number one, you need to look for a trend, right? Higher highs, higher lows. Determine what kind of trend the index is in. Find a support and resistance area. Determine where they are. Uh, time frames need to be in sync. So if you plan on trading, for example, the five minute uh, Apple. So if you're watching Apple on the five minute after re reports earnings, then you're going <coughs> to, excuse me, then you're going to watch the five minute, uh, five minute uh, NASDAQ. All right, then you're going to plot your trade. So what is plotting your trade? Determining in advance where your entry is, where your stop is, where your targets are, and what your risk is, right? The difference between the entry and the stop, this little bubble here, uh, represents the risk. And make sure that the risk is smaller than the uh, reward, right? So for every, let's say for every dollar risk, you wanna make two or three dollars or even more, so if you have, for example, this is the entry, this is the stop. And here you have the target, the ultimate target, let's say into resistance, just skip the trade, 
Okay, skip the trade because you don't have enough information. And you don't know if the price action is going to get enough catalyst to push beyond that resistance. So skip the trade. Just move to something else. Um, also, very important to position size for the trade. So make sure you have your allocated risk amount. Remember, day trading is very risky. I use 1% for my trades. For my day trades, I use a lot more for my swing trades. I use 3 to 4% of my swing trades. But I for day trading, I use 1% because you're dealing with algorithms, right? 97% of, or I'm sorry, 93% of the market volume for day trading is algorithmic. Right. So there's going to be a lot uh, uh, there's going to be a lot bigger fluctuation into the market. So you want to make sure that you don't risk a lot so you can live longer into the market. Right. All right. So my plan is, number one, I risk between one and three trades in a day. I position size religiously. I actually, um, we do provide our traders with the risk size calculator because in the futures market is a little bit, it's a little bit bizarre than uh, in the stock market. And I take my trades between um, 9.30 and 10.30, but I'm in front of the computer at nine o'clock, usually around 9.15 to 9.20, I get on the mic to do the pre-market game plan and to strategize for uh, the day ahead. But I already have my plan. When I come in the mic, I go like, boom, boom, boom. These are the levels. This is what we're looking for and done. Um, and not a lot of talking, but a, more action. Uh, so why do you think I trade? Uh, I don't trade more than three. Uh, um, that I don't risk more than three bullets in a day. I call so every single day when I come into the market, I it's like you're going into war. You have to go with proper ammunition, right? And my position sizing is my ammunition. So I want to make sure that if I use out my ammunition, you know, um, I'm gonna go into hiding, okay, until the next day. So I don't get killed, right? So this is exactly what you need to uh, prepare for. Uh, then um, why the one, two, three trades in a day? Sometimes you're going to, uh, let's say, have a first trade and you're going to have a losing uh, losing uh, trade. Sometimes you're going to have a second losing trade. So the reason why I have my third, maybe my fourth R into the market is to be able to recuperate the first loss that I uh, made into the market. So I'm going to explain it to you very easily how this goes. So for example, if you get into a trade, okay, and let's say you lose on the first trade $500, right? Well, you don't position size. So let's say you lose $500 on the second trade because you have a different, uh, you know, the the, diff the, uh, the risk is, you know, definitely the uh, difference between the entry and the stop is different. And you go like, yeah, I'm just going to risk, let's say, uh, only, um, I don't know, $500 or so, and you don't even position size, but you lose, for example, let's say uh, $100, right? Because you go like, nah, I'm going to pull myself out of the trade. So now you're down $600, but then there's another trade, the third trade, and go like, oh, crap, you know what? I just lost, you know, first two trades. I need to make them back quickly. I'm going to risk double to make my money back. So that's when you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be uh, losing, let's say, a thousand dollars on that trade. So up to now, you have lost like fifteen hundred dollars, right, or sixteen hundred dollars, right. So that is a you know that is kind of weird in a way because you have actually entered the trade with weird positioning, right? I mean, you have not used the same risk on every trade. And that is the problem. That is the biggest problem that traders face uh, in the futures market because they go like, oh, I'm going to take, I'm going to trade a standard to contract or I'm going to trade a standard uh, three micros. That is like 100% wrong. And this is what I'm telling you guys, because if you hear anybody tell you that you are going to take each trade with two contracts or five contracts standard, or the stop is going to be fi fixed, like let's say five ticks or whatever, that is completely wrong. They're not coming from any kind of institutional background. They're not coming from any kind of trading education school whatsoever. They're like zeros, right? 
because you cannot go in every single trade with one, one contract. It is insane because one time you're going to risk $500, one time you're going to risk $700 because the difference between the entry and the stop is always going to be different because you're deciding your entry based on price rotations, based on breakouts, based on the distance between the pivots, based on the distance between the entry and the pivot, right? And the low. So this every single time is going to be different. One time you're going to have, for example, if you're trading NASDAQ, one time you're going to have 10 points where let's say uh, sometimes you're going to have 20 points or sometimes you're going to have 60 points depending on the market volatility. So you're going to see that you're going to be all over the place. You're always going to lose money. And if you're losing money, if you're trading futures, if you're losing money, you're losing money because you are not position sizing because everybody that loses money and i talk to brokers i have three friends that are brokers and you know the stories that are they're telling me there are people that are risking ri literally about 50 percent of their account on one trade i mean this is insane you need to zip it up position size right so in order to have the same amount because if I have the first trade and not if I position size, so for example, I take the first trade and let's say my risk per trade is $500, right? But in that trade, I have three contracts. Let's say in my next trade, I still have $500, but I can only take the trade with one contract. And if I have another trade, still $500, but because the entry and the stop is so tight, I could take it with 10 contracts, right? So that is the difference. So your losses are always going to be the same. So that means that when you have your fourth trade, for example, after three losses, and if that fourth trade goes to your uh, goes to your target three, you achieve. Th I'm sorry, uh, achieves three R's. Okay, so if you achieve three R's, guess what, guys? You just took yourself out of the hole. So it, all you need is one good trade in order to do that. More so, you could be successful by being wrong. And I say wrong 60% of the time, 60. So you can be like, not even there. You, you like, literally you can have like big gaps of knowledge, but when you position size, you're still going to grow your account. This is crazy pants. Okay. So for overnight price action, because we're approaching uh, earnings season very soon, right? And you're going to have stocks that are going to report before the market closes. You're going to identify those key levels or support levels, those resistance levels, right? Throughout the technical chart. Determine the ranges, the direction, the trend, right? It could go against the trend. Remember, it could go against the trend. It all depends on how it will, uh, how it will report uh, and how, what the numbers are at the report. Pre-plan your entries, your stops, your targets, and you're going to do phenomenal. Now, no one has a crystal ball except me. I'm kidding. Okay. And what seems certain one moment can change in the next. And our job is to find the lowest risk set up and manage the risk. If you understand risk management before you even dive into the market, before you even look at whatever possible moves, you're going to do great. So trading is a serious business. It's really hard. Day trading is the hardest thing that you're going to ever, ever, ever do in your life. Swing trading is the easiest, right? But it's not producing that high income that day trading potential has. Uh, and it's not a hobby and it's not entertainment because it requires a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of research and a lot of attention and a lot of patience. The trader that is the more patient is the trader that is going to make the most money. So I had it was very odd that, you know, I received a lot of emails from traders and it was very odd that yesterday I had three traders asking me one thing, all of them. How do I make money faster? I'm like, okay, can I increase my size? And I'm like, you can increase your size, but you're increasing your risk, meaning you are you have, you know, like if you're losing, a, uh, uh, if you're entering a losing streak, you're going to blow up your account faster. Okay. So patience is key. So you can learn 
literally how to trade only by following someone that is really successful and that has uh, achieved already what you want to achieve. And it's uh, it happened in my case. Uh, I found somebody that could teach me how to do it fast so I could collapse time and not spend 10 years through trial and error. Uh, so find a mentor. I'm a true believer that you're not going to learn how to trade from a book or from a DVD. Um, and when you take a trade, think, always think, who are you trading with or who are you trading against? Uh, a lot of traders get very cocky. And if they see the market into highs, they have the feeling, I don't know why I've never had this, uh, but they have a feeling of like, oh, we got to short it. We got to short it. So extend it. It, got, it has to go down. Keep in mind that the market always has a reason why it goes up and never stops. And the fact that a lot of traders and newbie traders are shorting it, they're actually creating the flurry higher by them stopping out. They're actually liquidity providers, okay? So trading requires a lot of dedication and passion and a lot of effort and a lot of study time. You're not going to be a professional trader unless you have at least, and you're not really going to fully understand the market until you have 10 hours of trading, 10,000 hours of trading. And I mean, screen time and trading. When I first started trading, I was in front of the market studying and trading continuously 12 to 14 hours. I was at least two hours before the market opened and I would spend two to three hours after the market closed. I didn't need anything else. And I was trading this whole interval. I was trading from 9.30 to 4.30. I had a lot of dedication because I was on a mission. I needed trading to work for me. Uh, so... If you guys are ready, I this may be for you. This may not be for you. This is for those of you that are interested to fast track your trading further. If you're interested in becoming a professional trader, I can teach you how to get there. Uh, I have designed the Power Income Futures Trading Course, which is an institutional grade trading system. Uh, whenever you join, um, you know, a, um, uh, uh, let's say a prop firm. And I mean, like to become like an institutional prop trader, not like a prop trader, like with top step, right? Uh, no, when you're, uh, actually trading for Goldman Sachs, when you're trading as a portfolio manager and so on and so forth, they have a big binder with rules that you need to obey. Okay. So this is a 600 page, 650 page binder class that you're going to be getting instructions on how to actually trade the market step by step. And this is basically a, a go, going to teach you how to trade stress-free. So if you have been in my trading room, and I, I recognize some people here that are in my trading room, I'm never stressed when I trade. I have no reason to be stressed because I have the patience to wait for the setup. No setup, no trade. It's very evident. We plot the strategy when, before actually the market opens. We strategize why the market is open if it's choppy. And then we decide our levels. If it reaches a certain level, yeah, we're going to go long. If we're going to reach a certain level and a certain market condition, that is when we're going to go short. So like I said today in the trading room, I said we don't have a reason to go short. We don't. Okay, we don't have the catalyst to go short. Is there any devaluation in the market? Is there any catastrophic event that has happened that affected the market in such a negative way? No. And we're just ahead of earnings season. And by the way, if the numbers are going to be good this earnings season, guess where the market is going to go? Bam. And by the way, beginning of January, and all my traders have access to this, at the beginning of January, I did a projection meeting. I do it every single year, and I do it in the first week of January, and we have projections. We have already achieved two of these projections, two of them, and it's only, we have just wrapped the first quarter, and there are more targets to the upside by the end of the year. So I'm going to teach you how to manage risk. And how to choose those trades that ha are worth taking and ditch the rest. When I began this presentation today, I asked you guys if you love money and how much you guys love money. Right? How much you guys love money. 
Because if you love money, you will have the patience to wait. I will teach you where and how to place the stop so you don't get dinged out of trades, how to position size. I'm going to provide you with the calculator, how to put the puzzle together because, hey, everybody's going to teach you this and that and whatever, but nobody has a structured approach A to Z. We have the best structured approach. It's not me that I'm saying this. We were actually awarded by Benzinga for the best uh, uh, for the best financial literacy tool that is out there performance-wise and education-wise. And basically, the one thing that a lot of companies are not doing out there, and definitely you're not going to get it from a book or from a DVD, is putting it all together. You got to put all together. The person, the trader that puts everything together the fastest is the trader that is going to make the money. Okay? So... Trading is like the bow and arrow effect. You guys know the bow and arrow rule, law, the law, okay? The bow and arrow law. So when I first started trading, what did I do? I gave up my job. I took my savings account. And what did I do? I poured, um, sorry about that. I poured education, right? I poured education into myself. I invested in myself. This is the first thing that you need to do. I hear a lot of traders say, I'm going to jump in the trading room and if I like it and if I make money, I'm going to buy the course or I'm going to do this. It's just like me going right now to the Boca Regional Hospital right here and say, hey, everybody move. I'm going straight to the surgery ward and I want to perform this surgery right now. It's an open heart surgery. I want to do it right now. And if the patient lives, and if I kind of like it, I'm going to go to medical school. It's the same thing, guys. All right. Look, if you're too broke to invest in yourself, get used to staying that way. All right. This is my performance year to date. This is me right here. By the way, this is my office in Michigan. Okay. So this is year to date, 2024. This is my return this year. Okay. The win ratio is kind of crappy because it's all uh, only 60%. And usually I'm into the 80% range, but it has been a very difficult year, okay? Total trade closed till now, 97 trades. And by the way, I still have one monster trade that is open and that trade is in oil. I have been in USO since last year and it's really paying off. Look at the patience and that is a swing trade. And right now I am in oil futures. And this is an example to show you something very interesting. So remember what I was saying earlier that my risk per trade, I'm, I'm never risking more and my risk per trade is $5,000. So I never risk more than $5,000. And if I can, right off the open, I try to zip my stop a little bit higher so I don't even risk those $5,000. So you can see these are the type of trades that I do. Uh, and when I lose, you can see here that I never go above $5,000. So you can see $4,500, $3,000, $5,500, $4,800, And you can see my wins right here. $10,000, $1,000, $3,000, $10,000, $12,000 right here, $4,500, et cetera. Okay. All right, this is my portfolio. So I want to put the money uh, uh, where my mouth is. So this is January of this year. Okay, these are all the trades that I've done. All right, you can see here, I don't even trade every single day. There are two days here, three days that I haven't traded. I don't have to trade. I, I don't have to, all right? All right, this is February. This is March. This is April. April's still open, okay? April has not closed yet. All right, so we provide you the right tools so you can get on track to professional trading. Education and live assisted guided trading, 100%. We provide this for you. So after the course, you're going to trade side by side with me. You're going to coattail. I'm going to get you in the trade. I even say, if you don't have a successful system, for those of you guys that for example, don't have our trading education or don't have any trading education or you have trading education that is not producing any kind of results for you. So don't take your trades. Just stop. Stop what you're doing because if you're doing it over and over and over again, it's not going to change. You need to change the way you trade and then that's going to change your income. So what I tell my traders in the trading room 
is that if you do not have a successful method and if you do not have a track performance of at least a year of profitable, consistent trading, don't take your trades anymore. So for the time that you're in the trading room, just take my trades. Just take my trades. That's it, period. Why? Because you're trading my trading plan, right? I mean, who wants dust this, guys? Because everybody out there, what is everybody going to tell you? Trading is so personal. I could tell you like the direction, the area. Are they going to trail for you? No. Are they going to give you the exact entry? Nah, maybe. Are they going to give you the exact stop? Are they going to live through the trade and say, hey, raise your stop. Get out now or exit or do this now. No, they're not going to do it. Few traders know that if you need to reach consistency, you need to have what? Great education, a great support system. Okay? So you got to think right now and say, hey, what kind of trader am I? Right? Am I a welfare trader struggling? Like, man, one of these days it's going to start working for me. But currently it's not, or it has not been working for two years, has not been working for five. But you're still at it because you see the potential. You see some traders make money, or some of them at least say they make money, but never show you a track performance, okay? Um, so if you're into that welfare mentality, not successful, not successful, eternal student, you know, jumping from class to class, from education to education, from book to book, from DVD to DVD, from friend to friend, never committing to go like, man, this is hard, and I know it's hard. Or you want to have the millionaire mindset, successful trader. You want to have that. Okay. So like I said, when I first started trading, gave up my job, had my savings account, had a good savings account, took my money out, and I started investing in myself. I haven't even opened a brokerage account. I was investing in myself. And I was taking class, and classes were not cheap the cheapest one that i had i, I think it was seven to eight thousand dollars oh my gosh thank you francie like literally i had some of the best brilliant minds from wall street train me and i'm not kidding and i love to give back what i've learned because it would be a shame you know to keep this to myself oh my gosh you guys are amazing thank you so the first thing that you do is you invest in yourself. It's the bow and arrow, right? The bow and arrow. First, you take a step back and then you skyrocket higher, okay? These are some reviews. You could actually jump in our trading room and you could actually take advantage of asking everybody. Oh my gosh, Jessica, thank you. So these are just few traders that are in my room right now, okay? So I'm not BSing, okay? So if you want to trade an institutional grade trading system, and by the way, we start the class on Monday, you, well, I'm going to teach you how to trade. So I'm going to teach you the training wheels, what you need to have on your chart every single day to determine your entry, your stop, your target, the ABCs, tracing institutional levels. But before that, we got to go through the whole manual. So we're going to teach you about candlesticks. We're going to teach you candlestick language. Did you guys know that there is one candlestick that you can look at every single day to determine whether you're going to be bullish or bearish? So you don't waste your time. You don't waste your money. It's so easy, right? We're going to teach you these three stress-free levels, precise buy zones, precise sell zones, precise target areas, because everything is precise, guys. Trading is like math, except that you don't need to, you don't, you don't need to know math. You don't need to know math. It's like, Literally, uh, trading is like tracing, uh, tracing the charts. It's like, um, you know, painting by numbers. It's like trading by numbers. Okay, literally, and I could teach you how to do that. This is how they program algorithms on Wall Street. Okay, this is pretty cool. Okay, you didn't hear it from me. All right. So if you want to learn how to generate six to seven figure incomes, and by the way, guys, I mentioned earlier, you know, the small account, the this and that or whatever, you don't even have to trade your account. 
You can open a prop account. I don't care where you're opening your prop account. There are a gazillion of prop accounts out there. You can open an account. You can open a prop account and you can start trading with a proper account. The advantage of trading a proper account, I was trading a prop account when I started trading. I was trading a prop account. Why? No risk to you. You're not going to blow up your account, period. The other thing, it's going to teach you really rigorous rules. And guess what? It's going to teach you position sizing. Because if you're not going to position size, that account goes poof. Okay? So bottom line is that you have to be wired for success mentally. Make a big sign tonight. Or take a post-it. And write on that post-it, I am trader extraordinaire and put it in the bathroom. Every single time you go in the bathroom, look at that post-it and say, I am trader extraordinaire because you are trader extraordinaire. The fact that you're here right now and you're sticking to the very end, it means that you want to learn how it's done. And what I wanted to show you tonight is a facet of how powerful future the futures market is and I wanted to bring a different approach to futures trading that you're not going to hear anywhere else. The earnings through futures, which is super powerful. And this is when you're going to get your mega bucks. So don't procrastinate. Procrastination. What is procrastination, guys? Is the assassination of the motivation that will stop you from reaching your destination. What is your destination? Trader extraordinaire, right? It's true. So the Power Income Futures Trading Course is an institutional grade trading system that is designed for traders that are now losing money in the market, that have lost confidence into the market, that need the extra help to get them from point A to point B, that know that there is potential into the market, that need a process to eliminate emotions and stop the sweaty palms and that lack confidence in the market. This course is literally going to change your life. And more so, it's going to teach you from zero. It takes you from complete zero to hero. Actually, I do love very, very new traders into the market. Because if you're a new trader, you don't come with bad habits. Okay. I love that. So there are no bad habits. You're just going to learn the system, right? How many times, and you know, I was very fortunate because I was in the um, industry, but I have friends, very close friends that blew up accounts. Why? Because they actually had really bad trading habits and those trading habits were taught by someone to them. So you have to be very careful. I'm not saying to you, I'm not telling you guys to pick me and, you know, to trade with me or to pick my courses or to do whatever I say. No, but do your research. Okay. Do your research because there are so many so-called traders out there, so-called gurus, so-called, you know, I don't know that are, all they do, their main focus is to sell you education. The difference between myself and those traders is that I trade every single day with my traders. There are traders that are mentoring traders. Like, okay? There are traders out there that have no idea about position sizing and I was in a presentation. I was actually the next presenter in line and I was listening a little bit to that presenter when they're involuntarily because I don't like to listen to other people's presentation but I was listening to presentation and oh my gosh that presenter was teaching the traders to get in and it was about futures I'm not going to give names or anything that was teaching traders to get in <clears throat> with two contracts whether full size or with the uh, micros depending on their account sizes I guess because you can't really trade with a small account you can't trade um full size they this individual uh not a trader by my definition but he was so-called trader was literally teaching traders to get in trades with two standard 
contracts, regardless of the stop, regardless of the stop. And they were telling them that they need to scale out at whatever after they make a certain number of points. Let's say if they make three points in S&P, they exit one contract and another contract at five points. But what if that trade had room to go more? What if they lost in that trade and they lost with two contracts? What would have, I mean, can you think about the implications? What if they were on a losing streak and they lost 10 trades with two contracts? They blew up their accounts. So be very, very careful. Do your due diligence uh, before you, you know, commit to anything. Um, and remember, uh, all of these reviews that you guys, you know, can see, uh, these can be fabricated. So make sure you, you know, join. The, that's why I'm telling you guys, join my trading room. Um, if you want to come for a day, you know, you could get a day pass or you could get a weekly pass. Uh, if you're committed on, you know, wanting to take the course, come into the room and ask about the course. You're going to get live reviews. OK, so you're going to talk to somebody that has taken the course. OK, so I think that is much more important than, you know, writing, you know, kind of like reading a review. But anyways, that that's just my take. So in this course, we're going to teach you everything from A to Z. We're going to teach you, like I said, candlesticks. We're going to teach you patterns. We're going to teach you pivots. We're going to teach you trends. Uh, we're going to teach you synchronicity and divergency. We're going to teach you market cycles. When is the best time to buy? How long am I going to be long in this cycle? When are we going to start shorting? Uh, then we're going to teach 10 trading strategies. So we have technical analysis that we teach from A to Z. You won't need another book. I mean, can you guys imagine we our current manual is 650 pages? Should I say more? 650 pages. It's a freaking Bible. <laughs> okay. So we're going to teach you from A to Z risk management, uh, advanced technical analysis, the most powerful day trading strategies that you uh, that you could actually um, exploit for above average gains. And one more thing, what if I told you that everything that you're going to learn within this 650 page manual, and of course, I'm teaching the manual, you're going to get some recordings, you're, well, we're going to do a live five day, you're going to be in the trading room with three months uh, with me side by side. What if I told you that you can apply the same strategies to day trade stocks. Wouldn't that be crazy pants? I mean, yeah, you can do that. So who is ready to learn and earn? Because basically, this is what it's all about, to learn and earn at the same time. Uh, and trade to join me in this amazing journey that is the day trading and is an income generation style of trading. So the power right now is in your hands and it's up to you whether you want to change your life or not. I chose financial freedom for myself 20 plus years ago. And if the 2024 is your year to declare your financial independence, then this should be it. Uh, I literally trade a few minutes a day and uh, I look at the market for about two hours, but literally we're in a train of very uh, just just a few minutes every single day. So the Power Income Futures Day Trading course is going to start Monday and it's through Friday. Before Monday, you need to join before Sunday uh, because you will have to um, uh, review. Uh, we're sending you an introductory video and it's going to teach you about contracts it's going to teach you about contract value it's going to teach you about rollover it's going to teach you about option expiration quadruple which option expiration it's going to teach you about full-size contracts uh, micros trading hours and so much more it's crazy pants awesome uh plus we have added more sections to this course not only that we're going to teach you trading psychology a full chapter of trading psychology so you get your right mindset uh but we're going to teach you seasonality so you can actually use this course for swing trading as well so it has swing trading potential we actually have um strategies that are designed 
to trade the for the whole 24 hour market cycle. So it's going, we're going to be trading together in the New York trading session. However, if you don't want to trade with me together in the New York trading session, say, hey, I have a full time job. Guess what? I'm going to teach you a strategy where you can trade the overnight, the AON, my famous AON trades. This course is going to start on Monday. It's going to be till Friday. It's uh, plus you're going to get five days live plus five days on demand. You're going to get the complete trading plan. Plus you're going to get complete action plan plus trading psychology plus three months in the trading room plus money management, which is a huge chapter and one of the most important chapters. And I almost forgot to mention, you're also going to get a trailing chapter. How do you trail a trade? What happens if the trade goes against you? Then you're stopped out, right? But what happens if the trade works for you? What do you do? Okay, so this course is going to answer all the questions and I'm going to train you. So the market is going to provide you all that information. But I'm going to tell I'm going to show you what you need to look at. So the market is going to show you how you need to uh, to trade. So this is a professional trading program. It is, like I said, BOTUS Best in the Industry by Ben Zinga. It was in 2021. And if you guys want to join I could give you more information. You have lifetime access. I haven't even mentioned this. So this is not a, you come to the course, you take the course and you walk away. We're never going to see each other again. No, you're going to be stuck with me literally for life. Okay. For as long as we live, we're going to be stuck together because you're going to have lifetime access to the powering of Futures course live. Because the main thing about this course is repetition you guys we're never gonna you know let's say read an article and learn it by heart you need repetition uh doctors just don't learn about heart surgery and then you know they read a book about heart surgery and then you know they're uh they're uh, cardio surgeons no they have to go through training and they, you know, on and on and on again. So you get lifetime access where we take you from zero to hero, from student to pro trader. You also get the manual, guys. You're going to get the manual, 650 pages, right? I mean, think about only scrolling through the manual, which is insane. Uh, you're going to get a limited live retake. So every time we do the course, you're going to come at free because we believe that the first time you take the course, you're probably going to remember like, I don't know, 50% or 40%. The amount of information is so gigantic that you're not going to remember everything. So you got to keep on coming for the free retakes. The most successful traders have, uh, have been in my retakes at least 15 times. It's insane. And they have rewatched the videos and videos and videos all over again. You get three months access in the trading room where we trade side by side. You get a trading plan because my trading plan, right? So you get my trading plan, a thousand dollar value. You get access to private X feed. You have platform layout. Guess what? How many times have you asked, uh, have you asked yourself, do I have the right layout to see everything in the market? Do I even know how to, you know, do, have I chosen uh, a standard layout that the broker has given me or do I need a different layout? I'm going to give you the layout that my uh, mentor shared with me and I have adapted my charts to an institutional great layout. Uh, you're going to have access to a Discord room that is for us, uh, that is for students only in case you have a question. That is also a backup plan uh, for us in case our Zoom room goes down. You get student personal support. So if you have a question after the course, uh, you could definitely, you know, reach out to me. And it's not like, you know, you're buying a book from Barnes and Noble and then you go like, huh, I wonder what he or she wanted to say here. I wonder what was, you know, about this price action. Would they want to, what do they mean by that? So now you have somebody, you have a physical person that you can ask and talk to. Uh, you got risk risk free sheet. You get a calculator from us. And this total package value, if I were to sell separate chapters into the uh, into this manual, it would be over twenty three thousand dollars. Well, we're comp we're literally compacting everything from fifty nine ninety nine, which is literally, if you think about it, 
it's $16 a day. $16 a day. That's $116 in 10 days, like in two weeks. Like, think about this. How many times did you guys, do you guys go to Costco and spend $160 or $500 on things that you don't even need, right? At Costco. And then this is like peace of mind. It's like investing in your future, in your income. You're investing into a high income skill to learn a high income skill. Would you want to learn a high income skill? I wish I did that like gazillion years ago when I finished uh, university. Like I thought we ha we have, and by the way, this is another topic for another discussion, but we have it all wrong. Okay. Because we're taught to go to school to have a better job and to earn more. But what do we do? We're ex we're executing, executing, executing. We never get to the highest level, to the implementation level, to the creation level. This is the creation level, guys. This is the ultimate level right here, okay? So, and I, okay, I'm not gonna drop any Tony Robbins on you anymore. This is the only place where you actually learn how to trade as a pro as you earn at the same time. So you're gonna make your money back in the trading room and tr you're gonna trade live with us every single day. So if you wanna start your journey now, uh, I could tell you exactly where you need to go. Sorry, I don't have the link ready. I'm a really bad presenter here, <laughs> I think. All right, oops. Okay, so you go, okay, click on this and you go under education and this is the futures day trading. And here we give you just about, here's the link if you wanna tap on that, if you wanna join right now. And if you scroll down here, you're going to find a little table of content. This is just like, I don't know, 50% of what we're teaching. Seriously. All right. So you can see introduction to futures. And we have added a lot more here. Uh, you're going to learn about charting, charting tools and indicators, market cycles, market trends, time frames, uh, technical analysis, market tempo, trigger times. <gasps> trigger times. This is proprietary to trade out loud. So you don't waste your time and money to look, you know, throughout the day uh, to go at precise timings to make that incision into price and take your profits at uh, precise times. Reactionary market phases, anatomy of the trade strategies. Uh, trading patterns, uh, trailing methods, right? What if you have, you know, a successful trade? You need to learn how to trail it. Money management, trade journaling, uh, psychology, uh, action plan and trading plan, putting everything together, platform layout, showing you how to plot those institutional levels. You're going to be trading like algos in no time. All right. So if you guys are interested, don't forget uh, the link is right there in the room. Uh, it's you could go to our page right here and um, I'm ready for some questions. Oops, ready for some questions. If you guys have any questions for me. All right. So, yeah, basically, Dan, exactly. You're going to be trading with me the full quarter. That's right. Mm. Okay. Uh, the key stocks in Russell, there are 2,000. There are 2,000 stocks under Russell. You could actually go and you could uh, you could uh, go through the market minder and find those stocks. All right. Uh, when is the next class? The next class is going to probably be uh, sometime the end of June. Yeah, probably it's going to be sometime the end of June. If I think tomorrow bullish or bearish, I think tomorrow is going to be, uh, again, depending on how uh, JP Morgan and Citi are going to report. That's right. It's it's up to that. Yeah, we'll see. We're going to apply everything that we discussed today. Awesome. Uh, if I think that gold is going to go higher, yes, I think gold is going to go higher. Gold is going to go over 2,400. It has room to go to like 24, uh, 24,200 and something. Yeah. So it's going to go higher. All right. Any other questions? Let me scroll. How long did it take me to become successful at trading, meaning profitable? 
profitable. Okay. Uh, it took me actually, so I started, uh, I started out first three months were great. Uh, then I started, uh, looking for the Holy grail and I lost some money. Uh, so I deviated from my track and I lost three months. And then after three months, I had to come back into my system that I have uh, learned from my mentors and uh, I had to recuperate the money and then continue. And uh, basically, you're going to need about three years to understand all the market context. You you need those 10,000 uh, 10, hours in trading. Uh, will you look at YM tonight? Uh, no, I'm uh, definitely going to look at it tomorrow. Uh, and I'm going to plot it tomorrow. We could actually take a look here a little bit at YM. Here it is. Okay, so here's YM. This is a daily chart of YM. You can see here that we pretty much closed in the doji. It was a little bit of a weaker close than what we had in NASDAQ because definitely the structure is a little bit weaker, but we are trading into a lot of support here. You guys can see it. Uh, first time we topped in February, then uh, we revisited the support area in March. And now again in April, we're revisiting the same support area. So I'm going to tell you what I think uh, that, you know, uh, how everything is going to play out tomorrow. All right, so if the price action is going to get over today's high, 875, uh, there's a very strong chance that uh, the Dow is going to get back into the pattern and it's going to continue higher. And if it's going to trade below, then most probably it's going to try to try to pull back a little bit lower, but not substantially, because these are only two or three stocks that are reporting tomorrow that have the big power. And then uh, the biggest companies are going to start to continue to report next week. So next week is going to be uh, the biggest impact into the market. All right. So this is what I'm uh, looking for. Like I've mentioned before, I like to look at the four hour uh, at night and the four hour also plays out what we have just discussed um, uh, earlier. So yeah, still very bullish over a 75 and a little bit more bearish, but it depends on uh, depends on the earnings that we're going to be getting tomorrow. But definitely these would be these would be the areas. This is a very substantial area of resistance because it's coming from a prior resistance, right? Uh, from a prior support. So this prior support now is minor resistance. So if this level is going to be tested to the upside, the definitely things are going to uh, start moving higher. And uh, if the price action is going to prove weak, then this area becomes a major uh, rejection point for the market. And to uh, Deandra, and to answer your question, you could actually go to Russell here. I don't even know if I have Russell here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I don't know where Russell is here. I really... All right, but you could you could find Russell. Let me see here. Um, where we have indicators and this, you gotta find it. If you are with a broker, you could go on your broker, Russell. You could find it immediately. Basic material. Okay, here it is. Market S and P. Oh, real estate. No, it doesn't have Russell here for some reason, or I can't find it right now. But definitely find it and sort it ascendingly and descendingly. You're going to find the power players uh, that were in the market today. And of course, if you Google it, you're going to find uh, the heavy weights into that index as well. So you can Google that. All right. So thanks so much, everybody. I really hope to see you on Monday in the Power Inc. Futures trading course. It's going to be really amazing. And uh, I really hope to see you there. Change your career, guys. You know, like it's time. Beat inflation. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Hope you guys are going to have a great rest of the night. Have a phenomenal weekend ahead and hope to see you in class on Monday. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good night.